Hello, welcome to another Valley Forged. And if you love lasers and learning about lasers, you are in the right place. I talk about CO2, diode, lasers here, just about every aspect of uh, both using and creating a business and uh, upgrading and everything about lasers. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. And then uh, today, what I'm talking specifically is about is there's a lot of people going to be buying lasers in the coming months. And uh, what are the things to think about? Not only if you're buying it for yourself or you're buying it for somebody else, what is the long-term thoughts here about this? You know, is it just, uh, if it's just a toy or just something you want to learn on, well, which one's better, you know, CO2 or diode? And so we're going to get into some of that thinking here today. When it comes to diode lasers, they're kind of new on the scene. We're going to see a lot of upgrades coming in the next few years. 20 watts is really about as high as they get. And when you're talking about wattage, you're talking about like what it can cut, basically. Because with a low wattage diode laser, like a 5.5 watt laser, you can engrave pretty well on most things. Now, when you get up to 20 watt, yes, there's a few things you can do engraving wise that maybe you can't do with a 5.5 watt, but it's mainly about the cutting. And it is really nice, say you're doing an engraving, to be able to cut that engraving out uh, to the specifics that you want. And you're going to be able to do things much, much faster. And that's one of the upsides of the diode laser. It's you know, seemingly pretty easy to just buy it, yeah, put it together, and you're off to the races. You can just start using it right away. Uh, there are exceptions to this, you know, as in my case, where I got a bad motherboard. I bought a um, Ortura Laser Master 3, and uh, right away it had a bad motherboard. Now, they sent it out in three days. That was amazing. And that's one thing about Ortura. They do have a darn good customer service. I can't speak the same way about Xtool because uh, I, I don't own one, but there are so many people who have bought these machines that you're going to have a good resource out there just from people who have made mistakes and are fixing it or learning. So there's, there's resources out there online for you. Both of these 10 watt lasers happen to be right around after these coupons, $150 coupon. You're talking about $600, and uh, right now you got a $100 coupon here. You're talking about $600, so the same price. So I would say do your, do your research. Look at people who have, uh, have either machine, hopefully over a long-term period. Now, most of you know, and some of you don't, most of these review channels have been given a laser. You know, it's... You, they do a video on it, and then that's it. You never hear back from them again. So it's hard to really get an understanding of what can go wrong or what the common problems are with these lasers when people are only doing a unboxing and then first view of, of the laser. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but I think, really, you can't go wrong with either of these as far as having you know, a way to get it fixed if, if you got a problem and consistency and power for the amount of money that you spend. So that's why I'm talking about a 10 watt laser here. I really feel like 10 watts is the sweet spot for the diode laser right now. Because when you go to a 20 watt, you're looking at more like uh, between 11 and $1,500. And at that point, you're really not playing with a toy anymore. And then you really got to start thinking about what your future is with that machine. Because at this point, that's as far as you can go. So then you want to start thinking about, well, maybe it's better to go with a CO2 if you're ready to spend $1,500 on a diode laser. You know, it might be better to go with the CO2. And you can watch my former videos about, you know, buying the right laser for that sort of information. Other things to think about when you're thinking about buying a diode laser, um, that it is not, quote unquote, a real laser, meaning, yeah, it shoots out a real laser beam. But a CO2, if you're going to actually start cutting like half inch plywood, making really nice big pieces of art, or you want to be able to make stuff to sell every week, 
it, honestly, you're just never really going to be able to do that with a diode laser. You can make a bunch of really cool stuff and you can take it out to the farmer's market and you can sell it. But if you sell it all, there is no way by the week after you are going to be able to replenish your stock. I've run into this problem myself. You know, I made a bunch of stuff. I took it to one show. It all sold immediately. And then there is, you know, a lot of the stuff takes two, three hours to make on a diode laser. They're just very slow. So being able to do any sort of production is very difficult. But it was nice. You, you know, uh, you can take it. You can set it out. <clears throat> it usually works right away. You can get to learning how to use a laser. The thing is, is that if you learn how to use a CO2 laser that is like an inexpensive one, which we're going to get into, you understand how that works. And it works the same way. No matter which one you buy, you could buy, uh, you know, a $20,000 CO2 laser vice a $500 one, they all work in pretty much the same way with, uh, you will recognize all of the parts. That is not true with the diode laser. It looks sort of the same, but the way that it works is fundamentally different. And not only the way that the laser itself works, but also, you know, the things you got to do, like the cooling and, you know, using a CO2 tube and how lowering the power extends the life. And there's just a lot of things to think about, which you, you're just not going to learn if you have a diode laser. So say you're a dad and you want to buy a laser for your teenager to learn how to use, and you want to have kind of a camaraderie and you want to learn how to put this thing together, um, together, right. And expand it and learn and then maybe go to a higher level and teach them how to start a business or something or her, um, then perhaps getting into a CO2 might be a better idea. So there's just so much to think about. And if you want to ask a question about that, that I'm not covering, please put it in the description. I'd be happy to help you out. With a diode laser, you really can't do acrylic. Yes, there's some black acrylic you can do, but let's let's be real. Uh, it just really doesn't work well. So that is a nice thing to be able to do. There's a lot of projects that you can mix wood and you know acrylic and mirror and all sorts of things that you just can't do with the diode laser. But there are plenty of things you can, don't get me wrong. But overall, I've enjoyed my diode laser. I've done a ton of projects. It's been really nice just not anything that I could take as far as starting a business with. So jump on over to the CO2 laser. And really the only affordable, quote unquote, uh, CO2 laser is a K40. And so that's the only one I'm going to put into this category. If you're getting ready to buy something that that is uh, a bigger CO2, you're looking at at least uh, two to $3,000. And we're not going to cover that in this. I would suggest starting with the K40 and learning how it works. And it'll always be useful. This will always be a useful laser and you can always sell it for a decent price. And it will teach you so much about how real lasers work. And you can up this. This is a 40 watt. So basically the CO2 start at 40 watts. So you're looking at four times the amount of power with a diode and you can do acrylic. And you're thinking, wait, what is it? this is only $530. Well then that's cheaper than the diode lasers you're at, talking about. So why wouldn't I just get this? Well, there are some issues when it comes to buying a CO2 lasers that you don't have to deal with the diode. A lot of times you can just take the diode right out of the box and it's going to work like I said. But with a CO2 laser, there are things you got to do. You got to set up the water cooling. And then there is a lot to it. And, you know, as much as maybe they have a little quality control here at Monport and uh, they do a pretty good job, these K40s a lot of times don't come perfect. They try, but they don't come perfect. And you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to do actual research and maybe even get some upgrades to make this work the way you want it to. And you can watch the video I just did on cooling about the thing, you know, you got to get your five gallon bucket and put your hoses in it and algae remover and 
uh, you know, a little Dawn dishwashing liquid. And then are you in the winter? Because you don't want your tube to explode <laughs> because it freezes. So there's just a lot of things to think about that you don't have to think about with a diode laser. Now, this comes with its own case already. So that's something you don't have to deal with. As I said, it has a lot of power, but you are stuck pretty much with your 8x12 little area that you can cut in. And that's really not expandable, not without a great, great bit of, of finagling. So that's kind of the big downside. When it comes to CO2 lasers, what you're paying for is bed size, first of all. You can upgrade this uh, your CO2 laser. This 40 watt, you can actually put a 50 watt, and some even crazy people have put up to like 150 watts uh, in their K40s, in their 40 watt lasers, which is absolutely insane. But uh, it could be done. But then again, you're still stuck with your 8x12. But this is a real laser. Everything you learn about this is going to be completely useful when you buy a bigger laser. And you won't have wasted so much time, money. You will know exactly what you want out of your more expensive laser, having learned so much in this one. When you're out shopping for a $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 laser, everything you've learned here is just going to be so relevant. Another thing I always recommend is you, this is why I say get the Monport is because it comes light burn ready. You don't have to do anything. It's already set up. Now, light burn is kind of the best software, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to running a laser, both a diode and CO2. Uh, you can get it. It costs $50 when you buy it with this thing, and, uh, you've, and it's not a subscription. You get it. It's done. And once you learn how to use that software, it's just going to also be something you probably use on your next laser and your next laser. And it, it, it's, it seems worth just learning how to do right away. So this already comes with the, the light burn compatibility. It's probably the best overall beginner machine set up, ready to go. But in my opinion, when it comes to uh, a K40, you almost always want to do upgrades, you, you know, put in an air assist, maybe upgrade the fan. And there are a countless amount of videos. That's the great thing about having a K40 or a 40 watt like this one is there are so many people who have upgraded these and made different. Everything you could possibly think of has been done to this machine. And so you have unlimited amount of resources to teach you how to do that. And so, again, if you say we're a father buying your son or daughter a laser and to learn, um, the, and you wanted to do something with them and a product project and something that when they're finished with it, they have something that can really, really do production work. Uh, you know, it's not quite enough to, do, to run a full business on. But you could probably do a farmer's market every week with this. It's enough uh, power to where you could probably do some keychains and coasters and be able to keep up with your sales. Once it's working, it's working good that you'd be able to be pretty consistent with it. Now, there is, an, like I said, a limited amount of upgrades. You've got scissor lifts and honeycombs and uh, mirrors and lenses, all things that you can upgrade and have a good time with. And make it better, more powerful. It's a heck of a lot of fun. And at every step here, you're going to be learning for the future. Because lasers are just badass. It's just every day I wake up, you know, ready to make a new project, ready to do something new. There's so many things you could do on a laser that has just never been done before. Nobody's even thought of it. And I've done several of these things. And it really feels good to be able to do that. There's like not a lot of things out there where you can just create something new. Now, I do have a discount code for Monport that they have sent me. Uh, I think, yeah, you get 6% off on all our machines. Uh, I tried to give you guys a discount for uh, Ortur, you see right here, but I have already told them about this problem. Uh, I sign up for the little refer a friend thing and it gives you a link that is not found. We can already see what some of the problem is here. 
uh, HD. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully they will fix that because uh, I like to give everybody a discount link if I can. And, uh, oh, I mentioned about acrylic as well. This thing will just knock acrylic out all different kinds. You can make mirror stuff, see-through stuff, uh, fluorescent stuff, you know, and it's really helpful if you're starting a small little business and you want to do keychains and coasters and stuff. A lot of keychains are great in acrylic. There's a lot of things you could do. So if you're willing to put in the effort and it, that sounds fun to you. Um, I really can't recommend more going with the CO2 to start with. It just, the things that you learn on it are just going to be exponentially better as you go on with lasers. That's my opinion. Um, and uh, I'd love to hear your opinion out there if you think the same way. Uh, I know I've had comments. People say, hey, a diode laser is just a toy. In many ways, it is. I mean, I have done work that I get paid for. I mean, I pretty much sold out everything that I made on my diode laser. But really, if you just want to do production work, uh, you're just going to want to go with the CO2 laser. So you might as well start with the right thing. Learn light burn. Get a K40. Learn on that and move on. So what do you think? Uh, I... I I'm sure I missed some stuff. Let me know what I missed, and I will see you in the next one.